Hello. Oh, I'm on. Hello, everybody. Oh, thank you. Give me a shout back. That's great. Oh, thanks, guys. I don't know if anybody notices this, but my red line has been brought closer to the stage to stop me wandering down. You are all fantastic to come for this award ceremony. It's been a long day from 8.45, so you are, you are legends. Thank you so much. So I'm just gonna ask you to give this last push of energy before dinner. I know everybody's starving, I definitely am. If anybody's brought any food in, Michael Fenbeck will be really annoyed. So if you're going to eat, make sure you eat under your table. Now, come on all ye in right now and sit down. The sooner we begin, the sooner we shall eat. That's it, come on in. This is very exciting, there's so many of you. Now, as I said um, when we were in the rotunda, we're actually, tonight really is about remembering what we have all achieved individually and together. And whoever's talking down the back there, I will run down and catch you. I have the micro, okay, here we are. I've probably been shouting too loud. Okay, anyway, tonight really is um, from the rotunda till tonight. We, as I was saying earlier, we often forget what we've achieved. And there are 75 best innovation practices and policies that we will be awarding here tonight. And every year, this is really why Zero was set up was to identify innovative practices and policies that would ensure that the UN Convention would be implemented. So for those who have been awarded tonight, this is a moment just to remember all the work that you have done. Every tiny single thing that you have done to create impact. So I wanna give a round of applause to our 75 awardees here tonight. Please give everybody a good shout out, yeah. We actually awarded 83, but just due to visas and planes, we couldn't, the others were not able to be here. But every year we award anything between 80 practices and policies. So you can just imagine over the last seven years what that means and that community of collective shared expertise. And you know what the most exciting thing for me always with Zero is? Watching you all in the corridors as you're collaborating and swapping and visiting countries and changing cards and making sure that we are constantly spreading that change and that innovation to make even bigger collective impact. For those of you who have not won this year, a big round of applause for all the work you're doing because it's brilliant that you are here. And many of you have been previous winners. So just to make sure that I keep up the energy, we're going to start with singing again. So I want to hear a great boisterous voice for our Zero Hymn to kick off our Zero Project 2018 award ceremony. Take it away with the video. Video? Okay. <laughs> Because we understand if we 
We're going to be singing that song when we go home. Um, I need to explain something because it sounds like we told you a mistruth. Um, when we said it was the first live performance was in the Rotunda. But this video was made in Tel Aviv with the International School. And I think what is beautiful about that video is just seeing so many different people singing the same words together. And uh, we'll be able to show this video on our website, won't we, Martin? Yes, indeed. So for all of you who want to be able to sing the song next year, because we'll be asking you to sing it, please check it out. And now, Martin Essel, Please come and take the stage to open our award ceremony. Good evening to you all. Wow, this was a really exciting moment for this Zero Project. We just have unveiled the first accessible artwork and handed it over to the United Nations office in Vienna and then singing the song the Zero Project time uh, we have dedicated to you all uh, for being partners of now 10 years of the Zero Project. But now we will start the highlight, the real highlight of the year's Zero Project conference, the award ceremony for all awardees in accessibility. I should like to take this opportunity to give you a brief overview of our activities. Let me start with what I like to call the beating heart of the Zero Project and the Zero Project Conference, and that is our extensive research on innovative practices and policies. Over the last five years alone, we have engaged with more than 4,000 stakeholders from 180 countries around the world. And you all are one of them. And they are coming from across all sectors of society. Last year, for a period of more than six months, the Zero Project team researched some 370 innovative practices and policies on accessibility submitted from 80 countries worldwide. From these nominations and after engaging with more than 1,000 experts from around the world, 68 innovative practices and 15 innovative policies were selected as finalists. Most of them will be here tonight to receive their awards. But our research doesn't end with the final selection, however. All the innovative solutions that have been selected and then carefully analyzed and their stories written and compiled for the Zero Project report. This year, we revisited uh, accessibility for the second time as part of our four years circle, which also covers three other key themes of the United Nations Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities, which are employment, which we had last year, independent living and political participation, which will be our next year's topic, and education, which we will research in 2019 and for our conference in 2020. So far, we have covered more than 400 innovative practices and policies all over the world. Just as importantly, we believe, we continue to remain in touch with most of their representatives, giving us an ever-growing opportunity for a deeper analysis of patterns, of solutions, and various kinds of collaborations. This year's Zero Project Conference is our fifth to be held on the premises of the United Nations here in Vienna. The UN office in Vienna and several other UN agencies are among our most important partners. And I'm really glad that Daniela Bass from the UN Department of Economic and Social Affairs 
is here with us tonight. The Zero Project website and social media posts are all about accessibility too. At Zero Project Research can be found and itself researched on our website www.zeroproject.org, which we continually update and develop. It is supported by news about innovative practices, innovative policies, and our valued partners. We share this also via Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, and even via our very own YouTube channel. In the summer of 2017, jointly with a team from Ashoka, we launched Zero Project Impact Transfer based on existing scaling models developed by Ashoka like Impact Transfer and Globalizer. We identified 10 innovators out of 68 practices from this year's research. Ashoka and its mentors are now supporting these 10 to create a viable and self-sustaining models and for some even business cases that can be grown, scaled up or replicated outside the countries in which they currently work very successfully. I'm sure you had already met these 10 innovators uh, in the contact soon outside the plenary room. If not, take the opportunity to do so till tomorrow. Within Austria, it is my personal mission to support persons with disabilities directly based on the findings and networks of the worldwide network Zero Project, not only through small steps, but also through a paradigm shift. So my personal goal is to establish a network of opinion leaders with and without disabilities in all sectors of society and politicians in Austria to convince them implementing the most effect efficient innovations from the uh, Zero Project research and on the long run to develop a kind of innovation laboratory for a successful implementation of the UN CRPD here in Austria. This contribution should on one hand abolish existing barriers to persons with disabilities and besides, we want to learn more about the strength of these innovations and promote them to be implementing throughout our partners. For this vision, I personally pledge to give 50% of my entrepreneurial time to support this accelerating program and a process and to find as many supporters to fulfill this ambitious goal for a better world for persons with disability. We started in 2017 to promote employment for persons with disability through seven zero project dialogues where we could re, uh, reach some 600 com companies co-funded by the Secretary of Social Affairs in Austria. Second, through editing a newspaper supplement with 43 innovative and successful implementation programs. And third, through sponsoring a special award for a successful implementation. Such an effort cannot be undertaken alone, in fact, quite the opposite. And we are currently establishing partnerships and relationships with all stakeholders involved, most importantly, with employers themselves. After receiving an amazing positive feedback, we will continue and even strengthen this initiative in this year. We will add special dialogues for business sectors where we see huge potential for increasing disability inclusive employments 
notably in logistics, in retailing, and in others. My second approach for Austria is education. Together with Cisco, as a worldwide end-to-end -end IT solution provider who operates Cisco academies throughout the world, we jointly render the curriculum accessible for persons with different disabilities, like uh, persons with autism, persons with visual impairments, or persons with learning difficulties. A team of Cisco, persons with disabilities, universities in Austria, and Michael Pichler, head of Zero Project Education and Employment Programs, will adopt the courses of instruction so that the first five students with different forms of disabilities can pass the courses to be a Cisco specialist and have good chances of employment in the future. And in scaling up thousands and uh, scaling up this idea through Cisco worldwide, thousands of persons with disabilities throughout the world should have the chance in the, in, in the future for high quality jobs in future. At the Zero Project Conference 2020, we will present the results and share all learnings of this project with other companies and universities and to motivate them to follow this road. And this will be the second possibility to scale it up and engage other organizations to follow that way. Our third approach in Austria is accessibility. I'm also more than happy and thankful that we are developing closer uh, collaborations with the second, second biggest city of Austria, which is Graz, currently led by Major uh, Siegfried Nagel and by Kurt Honsinner, member of the city government of Graz. This city is preparing a fascinating urban development where within the following years, some 25,000 persons should live in a brand new, smart and uh, accessible environment. And my goal is to connect as many social innovators um, as possible with them to enable a real accessible development here in Austria. From all of this, I think you can see that we are really quite busy and engaged to support a world free of barriers to persons with disabilities. Needless to say, should you have any questions while you are here at the conference about what we are doing, please do not hesitate to ask. Uh, that's what we are here for. Therefore, I close my very personal thanks to all of you as our partners of the Zero Project Network and the Zero Project team led by uh, Michael Feenbeck, who sits here in front. The Zero Project and its impact would not be possible without you all. Thank you so much for this. And with that, I think it's now time for me to deliver you into the valuable and capable hands of Caroline Casey, who will launch us all into the award ceremonies. So, have a wonderful time, enjoy yourselves, and prepare to be truly inspired. Thank you. Caroline. Okay, so this year's award ceremony is gonna be slick and fast. So we have a lot of organization. You will not have Wilfred and I doing our Bonnie and Clyde of last year. It is going to, we're going to run in three sections. So we are going to ask our first 30 awardees to come up. They will be lining up over here with their anchors. Each awardee will come onto the stage here to be presented with their certificate by Martin. There will be a video of their work showing up behind on the screen, and there will be a voiceover explaining what the work is. After the awardee gets their certificate, they will then exit stage 
left, I think, and then they will do a social media video. Now, we did decide would we try and hold the applause for once we do all 30, but I think that's really mean. So I think we'll just clap whenever you want to clap after every awardee because everyone deserves a robust... So for all of us, we're going to have very sore hands, but clapping, clapping. Um, after our first 30, we are going to have a keynote speech from Victor Panida. After our second 30, from Yeti Nagusi, And then we'll have our final 15, and then we'll do a tara tara, and then we're going off to dinner. Have I made that clear? Yes. So you don't have me in Wilford. So I am now absolutely delighted to hand over the beginning of the award ceremony. I feel like we should have a trumpet. Wilford, are we ready to go? We are. Oh, thank you very much. That's uh, Victor doing ba ba da ba. Do you want to do that again for me, Victor? Ba ba da ba. Yeah, this is our keynote speecher. I know it's going to be great, isn't it? It's going to be great. Okay, so off we go, Wilfred. Uh, take it away, uh, Martin. If you'll come up, and we'll get the certificates ready, and we will start our first batch of thirty awardees. So let's give this room lots of love. Come on, lots of love. Round of applause. Come on, let's start. Come on, come on. Mr. Platt. Congratulations to Gala Prompter from Israel. Gala Prompter has developed an app called Gala Pro, which provides synchronized accessibility and translation service for live theatre shows and movies. The Gala Pro app allows persons with visual or hearing impairments to enjoy cultural events on any mobile device. Congratulations to Geek Buddies from the UK. Stay Up Late, an NGO based in the South of England, Develop Geek Buddies, a program supporting socially isolated people with learning, disabilities, and autism. The program encourages them to be active in their communities. By mid of 2017, there are 85 active buddy pairs. Congratulations to the Institute for Disabilities Research and Training from Morocco. The Institute for Disabilities Research and Training, based in Wheaton, Maryland, has launched a project called All Children Reading. It is designed to provide access to education for deaf children throughout Morocco. The pilot phase during 2016 has targeted 200 deaf children nationwide. Congratulations to JKJ and the National Associations for Visually Impaired People. JKJ, an Italian plastic fabrication company, and the National Associations for Visually Impaired People have developed a tactile path system with integrated communication tags. The path helps persons with visual impairments to navigate safely by giving voice directions to the user's mobile phone about the path and surrounding spaces via Bluetooth smart stick. Congratulations to CSF Global from Bangladesh. CSF Global works to establish a rights-based, inclusive society for children with disabilities in developing countries. In a district of Bangladesh, it has set up an early childhood services targeting children with cerebral palsy from rural areas. The centre offers therapeutic service to the children and provides training to the caregiver for home-based therapy and rehabilitation. Congratulations to Visit Flanders from Belgium. Visit Flanders is the official tourism administration in Flanders, the northern region of Belgium. In 2015, Visit Flanders worked together with all relevant national, regional, provincial and local authorities and the accessibility agency Inter to make the historic town of Bouge more accessible for people with disabilities.
Congratulations to Magic Me from Hungary. Magic Me is a social enterprise founded by five parents of children with disabilities. Together with a group of experts, the founders created a range of specially designed playground equipment that allows children with disabilities to play with other children. To date, the equipment has been installed in more than 40 public and nursery playgrounds throughout Hungary. Congratulations to Enable from India. Enable India is a non-profit organization based in Bangalore, India, active in 28 Indian states and working towards economic independence and dignity for people with disabilities. The organization has developed a mobile phone-based information sharing service called Namabani, which allows users to listen and respond to recorded voice messages from the disability community. Congratulations. Congratulations to Access Earth from Ireland. Access Earth is a startup company based in Dublin that has created a user-centric website and app. It encourages the disability community to find, explore and review their location of choice. Access Earth is now available for additional content contribution in 57 countries throughout the world. The project is currently in the process of raising 500,000 euro and estimates it will be self-sustaining by 2019. Congratulations to Österreichische Zivilinvalidenverband from Austria. Österreichische Zivilinvalidenverband is an Austrian NGO that, NGO that advocates independent and inclusive living for people with disabilities. Together with the Austrian Cham Chamber of Commerce, Zivil Invalidenverband has developed an online evaluation tool called Barrier Break, which educates and trains companies about barrier-free requirements. Congratulations to Migdal Or from Israel. Migdal Or offers support services for the blind and visually impaired. Operational for more than 60 years, Migdalor has branches in Haifa, Tel Aviv, Jerusalem and Be'er Sheva. Since 2014, the centre has offered a technology helpline that supports and gives guidance regarding assistive, te assistive technology for users of all ages. More than 1,000 persons have used this service in 2016. Congratulations to Karuna Foundation from Nepal. The Karuna Foundation, founded in 2007, works mainly in Southeast Asia. The model, Inspired to Care, developed by Karuna in Nepal, creates disability-inclusive communities in rural areas as well as in the capital Kathmandu. The program focuses on prevention of childhood disability, community-based rehabilitation, and strengthening community systems to continue the work. There's just one announcement that I, and then I write, uh, like uh, to make an addition. We're very really happy that Mr. Amber Karid, the Deputy Chief of the Mission of Nepal, is also here coming to celebrate this event with us. So welcome here. Thank you. Congratulations to South America for All from Ecuador. Together with its partners, South America for All, a travel company based in Ecuador, offers tours to various South America destinations that are accessible for wheelchair users. SFA, SAFA started as a private initiative and is now expanding to countries in South America. In 2016, approximately 300 wheelchair users booked tours. Congratulations to NOW PDP from Pakistan. NOW PDP is an NGO working on disability inclusion initiatives. Based in Karachi, Pakistan, the organization started a comprehensive project for public space and workplace accessibility and inclusion in 2012. And since then, more than 50 locations have been adapted.
congratulations to APSA and Tempe from Spain. APSA is an NGO and service provider for people with disabilities operating in Alicante, Spain. In 2010, the organization started a partnership with Tempe Grupo Inditex, a company which designs and markets and distributes footwear and accessories. Together they developed the For and From store in Elche, Spain, which is uniquely designed to provide universal accessibility for customers with various disabilities. Congratulations to Société Logique from Canada. Société Logique is a non-profit organization based in Montreal, Canada that promotes universal design. They have created a paper-based assessment form to review the level of ease by which persons with disabilities, the elderly and children can move through public spaces such as pavements, crossings and buildings. Congratulations to the Mobile and Wireless Forum from Belgium. The Mobile and Wireless Forum is an international association of companies with an interest in mobile and wireless communications based in Brussels, Belgium. The forum's global accessibility reporting initiative called GARI is a free online database that lists the accessibility features of mobile phones, tablets, apps, smart TVs and wearables. Congratulations to Helm Egypt from Egypt. Helm, which means dream in English, is a non-profit organization based in Cairo, Egypt. In 2015, Helm developed a mobile phone application and website called Entelac. Both display the accessibility of over 1,000 venues across Egypt through crowdsourced reviews. Congratulations to Pixel Laboratories in cooperation with E.ON and Minds and Makers. Pixel, based in Dusseldorf, Germany, is a social enterprise that uses the competences of people with and without disabilities to develop products and services for everyone. One of its services helps E.ON, a German utility company based in Essen, to better communicate with all of its customers. Congratulations to Murairo from Japan. Murairo is a private Japanese company based in Osaka. They have developed BMAPS, a smartphone application with a screen reader function that collects and shares information on the accessibility of Japanese points of interest through crowdsourced uploads. In less than a year, some 67,000 locations have been uploaded. Congratulations to Telemark County from Norway. Telemark's County Council, County Governor, Road Administration and Trekking Association have started to upgrade walking trails. This ranges from central urban areas to the surrounding areas in Telemark County, which is located in southeast Norway. Currently 12 of the 18 municipalities have at least one footpath installed and there are plans for the other six. Congratulations to Almanara from Israel. Almanara, meaning lighthouse in Arabic, is a non-profit association for persons with disabilities in Israel's Arab-speaking population. The organization has developed the International Accessible Library, a free online resource containing a wide range of literature and educational materials in audio format. The library contains over 4,500 professional recorded audio books in Arabic that can be accessed by persons with visual and print disabilities worldwide.
Congratulations to Europe Without Barriers from Italy. Europe Without Barriers is an accommodation, tour information and booking service in Italy. It serves mainly persons with physical disabilities who wish to travel in Europe. The website covers bookings in seven countries and in 2016 it provided services to approximately 7,800 people. Congratulations to Mobility Mojo from Ireland. Mobility Mojo is a website and mobile application that lists the accessibility of venues, points of interest, events, and transportation for persons with mobility, visual, and hearing impairments in Ireland. The website includes a mixture of self-uploaded information from various establishments and from user reviews. Actives since April 2016, Mobility Mojo lists 600 businesses and over 1,000 services. Congratulations to Hear Colors from Mexico. Hear Colors, a web accessibility company based in Mexico City, has worked with the National Autonomous University of Mexico to develop web accessibility laboratories together. The project aims for improving web accessibility expertise in Latin America. The approach is based on a training course and the development of web accessibility assessment tools. Congratulations to Patient Association for Distal Myopathies from Japan. The PADM is a Japanese non-profit organization based in Tokyo. They have developed VLOG, an interactive wheelchair mobile application based on Google Maps. It combines accessibility information with GPS tracked routes used by other wheelchair users. In the first month since release of the application in May 2017, Wheelock had over 1,000 downloads and more than 1,700 location postings. Congratulations to the Museum of Modern Art in the USA. The Museum of Modern Art, located in Midtown Manhattan in New York, recognizes the diversity of public's abilities and needs. It offers a variety of programs and services to ensure the accessibility of its museum and its collection. Approximately 60,000 people with disabilities made use of these programs and services from 2014 to 2016. Congratulations to Action on Disability Rights and Development from Nepal. The Action on Disability Rights and Development is an NGO located in Kathmandu, Nepal. The inclusive post-earthquake reconstruction, public building safe and accessible for all initiative is a project designed to ensure inclusive post-disaster reconstruction and reform in the 14 most affected areas of Kathmandu. Disabled people's organizations trained hundreds of persons with disabilities in mapping and monitoring all reconstruction work. Congratulations to Lazario from Chile. Founded in 2016 and based in Santiago, Chile. Lazario Tech SBA has developed an application that connects a visitor with location information, improving the autonomy of blind and visually impaired people. The Lazario app is a free application on iPhone, Androids, and by 2017, it has already had more than 7,000 downloads in 14 countries. Congratulations to Planet Abled from India. Planet Abled is a social business based in Delhi, India. It provides accessible travel solutions and leisure excursions for people with various disabilities tailored to their individual needs. It also mixes and matches people of different disabilities and offers a travel buddy program whereby 
a fellow traveler with no disability assists the traveler with a disability. Well, now, isn't that incredibly slick? Seriously, that is incredible. Um, thank you so much um, for all of our first 30 award winners, and thank you for all your clapping and enthusiasm. Um, we're going to get to dinner really quick. I think I want to get here before 8.30. It's going to be great. Now, we had a little trumpet sound earlier on, and that was Victor Panida. But he is well more than a trumpet sound. This is one of our great leaders in our sector. He is the president of Gates, and I am dying to hear him speak. I think you're just going to speak from the heart and commentary. So could you please put a massive round of applause for Victor, who's going to entertain... <laughs> when you... <laughs> Thank you, Victor. Would you like to hold the mic instead? Sure. I think he wants this one. It's always much better. Well, we've had... A tremendous and exciting couple of days. But none of this could have happened without each one of you. My story is a story that's repeated in many parts of the world, which is somebody comes into this world that doesn't quite fit, that is somehow different. But it's really about the imagination of what's possible. My mother was told that I would not be able to go to school. And she was told that it's better to keep me at home so I wouldn't be teased by the other children. So at a young age, I was denied my human right to an education. It wasn't about my disability. It was about the imagination of the teachers and the principals. That's why what we're doing today is so important. Martin Essel has given us a platform to share these best practices can expand the imagination of what's possible. By allowing us to connect, we're doing more than simply sharing a moment on stage. We're actually inspiring change. We're connecting with our hearts, with our minds, with our souls. You see, that really is the transformation that we all need. It's a transformation that happens inside and then has a ripple effect on the rest of society. Now, when I decided that I would dedicate my life to advancing disability rights, it was because I knew that I could do something. And it's because each one of you know that you can do something. So I want to encourage us all to take this energy today and go back home and identify who are the partners that you need to move forward. What are the missing pieces to the puzzle that can make this work complete? And don't be shy. And don't be limited by a lack of imagination. But dream bigger dreams. Because that's the only thing that has made a difference in this world. Thank you all. Thank you, Martin. And, and thank you to all the people that are doing this every day. Okay, let's get back to the more of the fun awards. Thank you so much, Casey. Legend. Absolute legend. Um, Okay, listen, we've just got some news, which is kind of exciting. Michael's jumping up and down there with excitement, if Michael jumps up and down with excitement. But anyway, the most important thing is, we are in, in Austria, uh, trend, trending fourth on Twitter, behind Trump. Now, seriously, two hours ago, we were trending number three. So can I just ask you, can we just get out and tweet and let's beat Trump and get to number one in the next hour and a half? Come on, let's do it. As Victor says, big, right? Big, dream big, expect big. So come on, let's get to number one and beat Trump. Okay, so we have the next 30 awardees. So Martin, please take back to the stage again. You guys get tweeting, let's get moving.
Well done. Ah. Congratulations to Mary Free Bed YMCA from the USA. Mary Free Bed YMCA is a 36 acre community centre supporting children, adults and families in Grand Rapids, Michigan. The facility was designed using universal design principles and is the first building in the world to be certified by the Global Universal Design Commission. Congratulations to Gallaudet University USA. The Storybook Creator is an IT platform and app developed in 2012 by Gallaudet University's Science of Learning Center in Washington, DC. The Storybook Creator provides a bilingual reading experience in written and sign language, supporting the literacy development of deaf children. Using the Storybook Creator app, anyone can create their own bilingual storybook. Congratulations to Corporación Ciudad Accesible from Chile. Corporación Ciudad Accesible, an NGO founded in 2000 and based in Santiago de Chile, works to promote physical and digital accessibility for people with disabilities. In 2002, the organization began to publish graphic accessibility guides in the form of leaflets called Accessible Thematic Files. By 2017, 13 accessibility thematic files have been published and are available as free downloads, supporting municipalities, planning institutions and the public. Congratulations to Open Doors organization from the USA. The Open Doors organization is a non-profit organization based in Chicago, Illinois. It teaches businesses how to succeed in providing services for people with disabilities and to empower the disability community. Since 2013, the organization has started Open Taxis, a centralized dispatch for Chicago's wheelchair accessible taxis. Congratulations to Bank Austria. Unicredit Bank Austria, a major Austrian banking group, introduced smart banking in sign language nationwide in 2015. They are the first and only financial institution in Austria to provide advice on banking products in Austrian sign language. Three sales managers are available for consultation in sign languages as part of the online branch. Congratulations to Orcam from Israel. Orcam, a startup company, was founded in 2010 in Jerusalem, Israel, with the mission to use advanced computer technology to help the visually impaired. Orcam's MyEye is a portable artificial vision device that allows vision impaired people to understand text and identify objects. The device was released as a prototype in September 2013 and my eye is currently available around the world in 10 languages with additional languages under development. Congratulations to the Central Bank of Ireland. The Central Bank of Ireland recently moved into a new office facility in Dublin. A key objective was to ensure that the building met universal design principles and was accessible for all. Hundreds of accessibility measures were addressed and an access officer is continually improving accessibility with trainings of personnel and additional innovations. Congratulations to Fenascol from Colombia. Fenascol, the National Association of the Deaf in Colombia, is an NGO founded in 1984 and based in Bogota, Colombia. In 2001, it started a project called Relay Service, which enables telephone communication between deaf and hearing people by means of Colombian Sign Language interpreters. Congratulations. 
congratulations to the Department of State USA. In 2015, the Office of Accessibility and Accommodations, a division of the US Department of State, established a global video captioning program. This web-based platform supports and standardizes the process of captioning videos for internal content producers and clients. In 2017, 5,000 videos have been captioned and are uploaded for general use. Congratulations to Access Map. Access Map is an accessibility map developed by Jason De Silva in 2009, which is available as free application on iPhone and Android and on the mobile web. The app features a gamification ele element called Access Mapathons, whereby teams compete against each other in real time while rating venues in their community on their accessibility. Congratulations to Fundación Once from Spain. Fundación Once is a Spanish foundation based in Madrid that works towards a society full of, inclusion, of full inclusion of people with disabilities. In 2006, it initiated the Fundación Once International Contemporary Art Biennale, an inclusive art exhibition recognizing the work of artists with disabilities and representing them in an accessible way. The Biennale, which attracted 185,000 visitors in 2016, shows different forms of artistic expressions that include cinema, theatre, dance, as well as music and fine arts. Congratulations to understood.org from USA. Understood.org is a free website resource for parents of children aged 3 to 20 plus with learning and attention issues. Created by 50 non-profit US organizations, the site is managed and operated by the New York-based National Center for Learning Disabilities. It offers more than 2,500 pieces of expert vetted content, five interactive tools, daily access to experts, and on-site social media community of parents and experts. Congratulations to Padius from Italy. Padius is an Italian social enterprise founded in 2013 as a 24-7 communication service that allows the deaf and hard of hearing to make phone calls. With the help of voice recognition software and other technologies, customers can have real-time conversations when they need to call service companies, book a table at a restaurant, or talk to a doctor. Congratulations to Fundación Prodis from Spain. Fundación Prodis is a Spanish foundation committed to supporting persons with intellectual disabilities with a special focus on children and young people. In 2014, Fundación Prodis de developed Columba, an open source software that makes a personal Gmail account more accessible to persons with intellectual disabilities. The development was part of the European Able to Include Grant Program of the European Commission. Congratulations to Jaipur Foot Organization from India. The Jaipur Foot Organization is an NGO headquartered in Jaipur, India, with 23 branches across the country. It is one of the world's largest organizations providing free prosthetic aids and appliances. The organization has grown from providing 59 artificial limbs in 1975 to serving some 60,000 people with disabilities annually now. Congratulations to Center for Sign Linguistics and Deaf Studies of the Chinese University of Hong Kong from China. The Asian Sign Bank is a grant-funded project based in Hong Kong, China. It documents Asian sign languages to support sign language research and development through a searchable online database of over 6,000 signs. 
The project is a collaboration of deaf and hearing researchers jointly with the Center of Sign Lang Linguistics and Deaf Studies of the Chinese University of Hong Kong. Congratulations to the Balkan Museum Access Group. The Balkan Museum Access Group is a peer learning group of individuals that work in the museums of six countries in the Balkan region. Funded by the Stavros Niarchos Foundation, the Balkan Museum Access Group is committed to developing their knowledge of accessibility. They are implementing accessibility features in their own museums, supported by two disability consultants and a three-year training program. Congratulations to the Right to be Heard from Israel. In 2012, the Right to be Heard project was established through the collaboration of the American Jewish Joint Distribution Committee, the Israeli Ministries of Social Welfare and Law, the Israeli National Insurance Institute, the Israeli Police, and two nonprofit organizations. The right to be heard improves the access to justice for persons with communication disabilities. Congratulations to Beit Izzy Shapiro from Israel. Beit Izzy Shapiro is a non-profit organization that develops and provides innovative therapies and services for children with disabilities and their families. Beit Izzy Shapiro is also a social change agent, aiming to scale up its solutions through changing attitudes, training, and impacting legislation. In 2006, the organization developed Friendship Park, the country's first accessible and inclusive playground, and it has developed a methodology to replicate them all over Israel. Congratulations to APA and Top Easy from Austria. The Austrian press agency APA, based in Vienna, is a national news agency and the country's leading information provider. In cooperation with Capito, a service provider specialized in translating complicated subjects into easy language, based in Graz, Austria, APA has launched a news service in easy language called Top Easy. Currently, around 40,000 persons per month use the service. Congratulations to Microsoft from the USA. Microsoft, a US multinational technology company with headquarters in Redmond, Washington. The organization has developed Microsoft Office 365, a cloud-based subscription service for Windows, Mac OS, iOS, Android, and Windows Phone. To simplify the utilization for persons with disabilities, Microsoft 365 has been made accessible by including accessible templates, a built-in learning checking tools, intelligent suggestions for alternative image text, and accessibility checker. Congratulations to Mopius from Austria. Mopius is an IT startup company based in Vienna, Austria. It has developed MenuSpeak, a barrier-free multilingual application that helps people with visual impairments to choose food and beverage items from the menu in, in a cafe or restaurant. Currently, the app is used by more than 25 hospitality companies in Austria and one in Jamaica. Congratulations to the Salzburg Museum from Austria. The Salzburg Museum offers text and information about their exhibitions and collections in easy language. The museums first implemented this service during its 2016 exhibition titled Bishop, Emperor, Everyman, which allowed many people with intellectual disabilities to participate in cultural life in an independent way. The service has become a standard for the museum and is used in all exhibitions.
Congratulations to World Access for the Blind. World Access for the Blind is a nonprofit organization located in California. It works to strengthen the physical, mental, and personal development of the blind and people with ability challenges. The organization has developed Flash Sonar, a technique that helps the visually impaired to use their own human sonar to perceive their surroundings by using a clicking of tongue technique. Congratulations to Barrier Break from India. Barrier Break is an Indian for-profit social enterprise based in Mumbai that works in the field of digital accessibility and assistive technology. The company has designed an app called Newshook which provides easy access to news for persons with various disabilities. Since its start in 2016 until 2017, Newshook has gained 8,000 users who have downloaded the app and 20,000 users who have read the news every day on the newshook.com website. Congratulations to Surya Kanti from Indonesia. Jayasan Surya Kanti Badung is a nonprofit foundation that specializes in supporting infants and children in rural areas of Indonesia. It has established the Surya Kanti Foundation Center for the development of child potential to provide clinical services and education for children with disabilities aged zero to eight years. From 2014 to 2016, approximately 18,000 patients were served. Congratulations to Exceptional Lives from USA. Exceptional Lives is a non-profit organization based in Massachusetts, USA. The organization has developed an online IT platform that provides tens of thousands of, of parents and caregivers with personalized information. They support processes such as applying for public benefits and identifying other services for children and young adults with disabilities. As of 2017, the IT platform has expanded to the state of Louisiana with other US states set to follow. Congratulations to Access Israel from Israel. Access Israel, established in 1999, is a non-profit organization headquartered in Tel Aviv that promotes accessibility and inclusion of people with disabilities and the elderly. The organization has developed a business model for training service providers regarding accessibility issues. More than 35,000 service providers have been trained since the start of the project in 2009. Congratulations to Young Africa from Mozambique. Young Africa is a confederation of independently, locally registered, affiliated organizations. They run skill centers, youth employment programs, and community activities in their respective branches in Botswana, Mozambique, Namibia, Zambia, and Zimbabwe. The project focuses on making training and services in the education sector accessible by building the first accessible vocational training center. Congratulations to the Lebanese Physical Handicapped Union from Lebanon. The Lebanese Physical Handicapped Union, founded in 1981, is an advocacy organization for people with disabilities in the capital city of Beirut. Together with the European Network of Accessible Tourism, a non-profit association of tourism organizations, LPHU started the Inclusive Tourism Project in 2016. This includes accessibility measures, such as creating ramps and providing braille and audio support for persons with various disabilities.
congratulations to FKM BKA from Indonesia. FKM BKA is a cross-organizational forum of various disabled people's organizations located in, located in the Aceh province, an especially tsunami and earthquake affected region in Indonesia. Founded in 2014, the organization has prepared inclusive disaster evacuation strategies by developing hazard and resource maps. Congratulations to Movability Foundation from Togo. The Movability Foundation, based in Geneva, Switzerland, supports sustainable, accessible, and quality physical rehabilitation services. The International Committee of the Red Cross created the Movability Foundation in 1983 to provide administrative, log logistical, and technical support. Amongst other services, they offer the Essential Management Package a course designed to train and support managers of physical rehabilitation centers. Okay, we are um, nearly there. As we just get the podium for our next speaker, I'd like us to give a very quick shout out to Ava down the back, who is working very closely with Wilfred to make sure this is moving really slowly, and this is a pretty big deal. So could we just give a shout out to Ava and Wilfred for making that video synchronizing Amazing, Ava. So our second keynote speaker of this evening is Yeti Nagusi. Um, and I think in 2017, she was one of four people to win the Alternative Nobel Prize and also works for Light for the World. But we are absolutely delighted to have her here and welcome you very much onto the stage, Yeti. So a big round of applause, please, for Yeti. Thank you very much and uh, uh, good evening everyone. It's so <coughs> heartwarming to be in front of all these achievers in this amazing night. And I know somebody who has been always carried out in the whole 10 years. Not Michael, not Martin. Mostly referred as accessibility. I don't say that accessibility is only a theme this year. We cannot talk about education, we cannot talk about employment with accessibility. So I would say that it's an every year theme for us. Dear members of the Zero Project Conference, distinguished awardees, invited guests, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to thank the Zero Project family for inviting me to speak at this unique conference, which not merely preaches accessibility and inclusion, but also tries its best to leave it to the fullest. Please allow me to congratulate Mr. Martin Asel and his dynamic team for creating such a fantastic momentum for the fight against inequality and discrimination of persons with disabilities by enabling exchange and sharing innovative approaches from all over the world. My personal experience has taught me a thing or two about this team accessibility. I was five years old when I went blind. At that moment in time, in my local community eyes, I lost all the values. People assumed that going blind meant the end for me. The destiny of a girl in my rural village of Ethiopia was to marry at the age of, 18 and at the age of eight or 10 and bring a dowry to the family. And surely, no man would want to marry a blind girl. I tell you this story because this turn of events surprisingly granted me a huge opportunity in life. After I went blind, my mom and grandma were able to ensure I received an education at my young age rather than a husband. Mm, cool. <laughs> they sent me to special school. <laughs> and I excelled. In class, I worked hard. And I scored the top marks, and I made friends. I went on to university to become one of the first blind female lawyers in Ethiopia. I now engage in international advocacy for the, person, for the rights of persons with disabilities, alongside many of you in this room. Accessibility has been crucial to my success 
and to the challenge I have faced all the way. And it's crucial to realize the success of quite so many people with disabilities. Let's make a very practical example, the issue of education. This is a theme very, very close to my heart. Today, more than 32 million children with disabilities worldwide are shut out of the classrooms. This is a human rights travesty. And we won't get anywhere neither to bring these children to classrooms without thinking about accessibility in a holistic manner and a strategic manner. Without accessible transports to schools, accessible buildings, accessible learning materials and communication, without well-trained teachers, boys and girls with disabilities will continue to be denied this basic human rights. That's why I said accessibility was there when we talked about education maybe two years ago, and will be there when we talk about it in 2019 and 2020. It's the entire process of inclusive education which needs to be accessible. My experience in countries like Ethiopia, Burkina Faso, in Mozambique, is that many people believe that accessibility is limited to physical environments. For me, as a blind person, for example, it's difficult and dangerous to cross a main road when there are no audio traffic lights. In public transport, Acoustic signals and audio announcements help me a lot to orient myself. Lack of accessibility features has often caused me to arrive late at school or has limited my options to participate in school outings when I was a child. During my school days, I had a lot to rely on my friends as they read to me as I had no braille books to refer. What I want to show with these examples is that accessibility can make all the differences in opening education opportunities and social inclusion for children and adults with disabilities. Again, I must say that it's a great honor for me to speak to you on an issue which is very close to my own life and heart. It's also a walk down memory lane five years ago when accessibility was the theme of this conference. I was introduced to the Zero Project. Then I was also a recipient of the symbolic award, as many of you did today, for our guide to accessible at this project, which was implemented by the Ethiopian Center for Disability and Development, supported by Light for the World. I then remained deeply involved. So coming into Zero Project is a one-way trip. You cannot get rid of it once you are stepping into it. And you can see that it has somehow been addiction to some of us throughout the year that we want and we crave to have more and more. <laughs> Accessibility has to be viewed as a way of investing in society and the future integral part of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. The global disability community has identified accessibility, or rather the lack thereof, as a main obstacle against ensuring full and effective participation of persons with disabilities in sustainable development. This in turn significantly threatens the achievement of leave no one behind principle of the sustainable development goals. It also undermines and contradicts with the motto of the disability movement, nothing about us without us. Turning this obligation into reality requires new and increased investment, research and innovations, as you have been seeing this evening, the production of assistive devices and technology like Microsoft and others we recognize this evening to remove and overcome barriers. It is completely unacceptable to use public funds to perpetrate or create inequalities. International cooperation, therefore, is a crucial area to promote accessibility. Any new investment made within the framework of international cooperation must be designed in a way to remove existing barriers and to prevent the creation of the new ones. This long journey of ours towards a zero barrier world is not easy. It requires genuinely committed partners like you, both from the public and the private spheres who are determined to make exclusion and discrimination of persons with disabilities a history by creating platforms for sharing innovative policies and practices 
just as the Zero Project is doing. I would like to conclude my speech by calling upon all of you in and out of this room to stand firmly for accessibility as a basis for the enjoyment of all human rights for all persons with disabilities. I said all, not some, regardless of age, gender, geographical location, or any other status. Congratulations to all the winners of the Zero Project Awards. With your work, you have significantly contributed to an inclusive society, barrier-free, where persons with disabilities are valued, their voices are heard, and their capabilities are recognized. Zero barrier, zero bond. Thank you. Thank you so much, Yeti. Do you want my arm? Thank you. I think you're absolutely right. Loved hearing the passion by it. it is no longer acceptable that public money is used to promote inequality. Absolutely fabulously said. Thank you so much. Now, I've got to tell you a bit of news. We've beaten Trump. So we're number two in the Twitter um, in Vienna. And we're number three in Austria. OK, so you literally have 10 more minutes. Get the tweets out. Remember, hashtag ZeroCon18. Martin, up you come again for our final 15 awardees, OK? Everybody else, come on now. 10 minutes. We've got to get to the top. Congratulations to Wayfinder from the UK and ITU. Wayfinder developed an open standard to make audio navigation systems accessible for persons with visual impairments. It was approved as the first open standard for indoor audio navigation by the International Telecommunication Union, a United Nations agency. Wayfinder becomes the first internationally recognized standard for accessible audio navigation. Congratulations to the government of Dubai. In 2017, to the government of the Emirate of Dubai has begun to implement the, of the Dubai Emirate Universal Dubai Accessibility Strategy and Action Plan. The Dubai Ten ministries in Dubai have been mandated plan. to review Ten the new policy and to begin to develop their plans on how to improve universal accessibility. Using five strategic elements, Dubai is on track to create full accessibility to the built environment and public transportation by 2020 based on universal design public principles. transportation by 2020 based on universal design principles. Congratulations to the Family Court in Oviedo and Plena Inclusión from Spain. The Family Court in Oviedo in the Spanish province of Astorias has begun drafting copies of court verdicts and summonses in easy language for persons with intellectual disabilities. The courts send their official documentation to Plena Inclusión Astorias, an NGO that supports persons with intellectual disabilities. Plena Inclusión then converts the documents into easy language to share with the intended recipient. Congratulations to the city of Oslo from Norway. Oslo Kommune, the administrative authority of Oslo, Norway, has developed a comprehensive plan for universal design covering transportation, communication, construction, public property, outdoor areas, and ICT. The plan aims that all municipal agencies and companies will implement universal design requirements in their areas of responsibilities by 2025. Congratulations to the US Access Board and the EU. In 2004, the international standards cooperation between the United States and the European Commission was initiated to avoid conflicts and to harmonize their ICT accessibility standards. Together, they created a framework for developing a wide range of applications that make ICT products and services more accessible for people with disabilities in both continents. To date, 90% of all standards have been harmonized.
Congratulations to the World Tourism Organization and Fundación ONCE from Spain. Since 2016, Fundación ONCE and the United Nations World Tourism Organization have been driving the creation of a global standard accessible tourism for everyone. The standard will provide clear guidelines with specific recommendations and requirements for accessible tourism. A technical committee is drafting the standard within the framework of the International Standards Authority. Congratulations to the Department of Transport from South Africa. The South African Department of Transport has developed a national strategy to guide cities in providing accessible public transport systems. The strategy includes new, new universal design standards for the whole travel chain and assists each city with implementing them while also tracking progress with implementation. Congratulations to the province of Ontario from Canada. The Accessibility for Ontarians with Disabilities Act is a legal framework from, for developing accessibility standards for organizations in both the public and private sector. The Act determines five standards, design of public spaces, employment, information communication, transport and customer service. Together, these five standards are called the Integrated Accessibility Standards Regulation. Congratulations to the European Union. In October 2016, the European Parliament and the Council for the European Union passed a directive that requires public sector bodies in all 28 EU member states to provide accessible websites. Moreover, it requires to ensure that media and documents available on the websites are also accessible. Member states must make their content accessible or provide a public explanation where this has not been done. Congratulations to the World Blind Union and World Intellectual Property Organization. The World Blind Union and the World Intellectual Property Organization started a campaign to address the book famine, that is the lack of accessible printed materials globally. This initiative became the Marrakesh Treaty in June of 2013. The treaty allows for copyright exceptions to fa facilitate the creation of accessible versions of books and other copyrighted works for persons with visual impairments. Congratulations to Uva Provincial Council Monaragala from Sri Lanka. Monaragala is a populous, less developed district in the Uva province of Southeast Sri Lanka with approximately 450,000 inhabitants. In 2011, the Uva Provincial Council developed a policy to achieve universal inclusion in this district by 2018, starting with the city of Welawaya. Since the start of the project, approximately 50,000 persons with disabilities have benefited. Asante, we are so great that you made your trip to Vienna to come on behalf of your late husband, Sena, who passed away in summer and who developed this great program. So thank you again for coming to us. Thank you. Congratulations to the Ministry of Information and Communication Technology from Colombia. In 2013, the Ministry of Information and Communications Technology of Colombia set out a roadmap called L Live uh, Digital for the People. It promotes access, effective use, and massive appropriation of ICT through policies and programs to improve the quality of life of every person in Colombia.
Congratulations to Saraki Foundation and USAID in Paraguay. In 2009, the creation of seven laws led to improved physical accessibility standards in Paraguay. Together with the Education Ministry, the National Standardization Institute, and the National University's School of Architecture, Saraki defined standards for physical accessibility. With additional guidance and support from USAID, legislative and regulatory reforms, communication campaigns, and training were initiated. And that wraps up our award ceremony.